Hi, my name's Nadine and I'm from Wolverhampton in the UK and I practice Fight Master Yoga. Welcome to Fight Master Yoga, the place to get your yoga fix. I'm Leslie Fight Master, certified yoga teacher trainer, and today I'm your teacher. This free YouTube yoga video is yoga for roadies, or it could be called yoga for travelers or backpackers. I have Matt West joining me today. He's a sound engineer and production manager for the band called Phoenix. Matt travels a lot and has been practicing online with me for five years. He wanted a class that's good for lower back pain due to an injury that he has and because it bothers him because he travels so much. So let's begin sitting up nice and tall, bringing our hands together. This is an affirmation for the low back. I deserve to enjoy life. I ask for what I want and I accept with joy and pleasure. So let's release that and we'll make our way into child's pose. So coming into child's pose with the arms extended in front, knees wide so your belly can rest between the thighs. Start to spread out the fingers, pressing into the base of your fingers. Active arms lifting up through forearms and then pressing your hips back toward your heels to stretch out your back. Take a couple long, smooth breaths. You can let your head rest down or keep it off the mat. Next exhale, take your hands to the right and shift your hips to the left so you can stretch out the side body. Inhale to center. As you exhale, hands to the left and hips over to your right. And then make your way back to center. And then inhale onto the hands and knees and line up your wrists under shoulders with knees under hips. And then this one is a great one for the back just to get it moving. So as you inhale, bring your chest forward, lift your chin and tailbone. And as you exhale, press away from the floor, round the back, let your head go. So keep a little bit of your muscles engaged in the belly as you bring your chest forward and then exhale now pull the belly in and up even more once again inhale widen the collarbones look up lengthen exhale and round the back chin to our chest and then coming to a neutral spine and extend the right leg back, but tuck the toes under a moment. Keep the foot on the floor. Now drop your right hip down. Lift your inner right thigh up. Next inhale, lift the leg off the floor, but continue to drop the outer right hip down and lift the inner thigh up. Also draw your ribs and belly in and keep that left hip uh, drawing in towards center as well. And then release it. We'll do the left side. So first, tucking the toes under. As soon as you lift that leg, the hip wants to go up. So drop the outer hip. Lift the leg. Point the toes straight down to the floor. Continue to pull your ribs and belly in. Press up through the upper back, but keep the chest moving forward. Take another breath and release it. And then from here, we'll add on again. Right leg up, lifting from the inner thigh and then drop the outer hip. Now extend left arm forward. Poor Matt was on a hill, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to balance. Pull the ribs and belly in and up and continue to drop the outer right hip down so that hips are level. Release. So again, really engage your belly muscles a lot. As you extend left leg back, lift it up from the inner thigh, drop the outer hip down Press through the upper back, belly and ribs in, right arm forward, balance. So the more you can lift your ribs and belly in and up and keep outer hips and inner thighs engaged, the easier it'll be to balance. Release. Then walk your hands forward about a handprint, tuck the toes under, stretch up and back for downward facing dog, and then bicycle the legs as you warm up here in your first one. Now bending both knees to stretch back, get really long through the spine. Arms are shoulders distance, feet are hips width. Press into the base of your fingers. Turn your outer upper arms back. 
And then inhale to plank pose, top of a push up, knees down for this one. And then shifting forward, lower all the way down to the belly. Slide the hands by the low ribs and untuck your toes. Pull belly away from the floor. Inhale for cobra. Lengthen your sitting bones toward the heels. And then lower back down. And then as you inhale, hands still by. At this time, bring arms in front, palms facing each other. You can let your forehead rest on the floor. Draw your belly away from the mat. Tailbone lengthens toward heels. Now keep that, keep pressing the pubic bone down gently as you inhale, lifting your right leg and left arm. Lift the right leg from the inner thigh just like you did in table position. Drop that outer hip down. Take a long breath. And release it. And now we'll inhale the left leg up, right arm forward. And drop the left hip down. And you can keep your head down or lift it, whatever works better for you. But pull the belly in and keep lengthening through the lower back. Release it. Hands by the low ribs again. Or, just kidding, arms by your sides, palms facing in. Now, same actions. Lengthen tailbone toward heels. Pull the belly in. Roll the shoulders away from the mat. And then inhale, lift the legs. Lift them up from the inner thighs. And the outer hips are still going to roll down toward the mat. Keep the back of your neck long as you breathe here. Take another breath and let it go. Really good for strengthening your back muscles. Bring your hands by your low ribs. Take an inhale and come to cobra or into up dog. If you're an up dog, thighs and knees off the floor. And then exhale, make your way back into downward facing dog. Again, arms, shoulders distance, and feet hips width. Keep pressing the weight up to the heels, or up to the hips, down to the heels. Spin the inner thighs back and let your head just hang so that your ears and arms are about the same line. Take another breath here. Then bend your knees and look up and walk your feet forward or lightly hop. Inhale halfway up, hands to shins or fingertips down. Then exhale, fold forward and bend the knees as much as you need to. Then inhale, reach all the way up. Matt bends his knees as he comes up to protect his low back. If you have back issues, definitely a great modification. Come to the front of the mat in Tadasana. Feet hips width or together. Press evenly through the four corners of the feet as you lift and firm the legs. Inhale, sweep the arms up, look up. Exhale, hinge from your hips and fold forward over the legs. Bend the knees as needed. Then inhale, come halfway up, lengthening the spine. Exhale, make your way to plank pose. And then hug the elbows in as you lower. Shoulders no lower than elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Get your shoulders above the wrists. Exhale, stretch into down dog. So as you stretch back, Imagine that I'm there pressing at the base of your spine, just lengthening your spine, giving you more weight toward your legs and your hips. Keep pressing on the thumb and first finger side of your hand as you spin the outer upper arms back and just let your head hang. No need to hold the head up. Then look forward and step the feet to the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold, hips over heels if the legs are straight. Press through the feet on your inhale with a long spine, reach up. And exhale, bring hands to heart. And again, Syria A, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hinge from the hips and fold forward. Matt touches his legs as he moves forward to protect his back, which is great. Come halfway up, inhale. Exhale, step back and keep lifting the belly as you chaturanga. Then inhale, pressing up, shoulders back and down. Exhale, lift up and back into down dog. Breathe here. Inhales and exhales equal in length. 
outer edges of your feet are parallel. Relax the shoulder blades gently toward the waist. Look up, bend the knees. On an inhale, lightly step or float feet. Come halfway up, lengthen. As you exhale, fold in. Press down, inhale, reach all the way up to lengthen. Exhale, bring hands to heart. Once more, reach up on your inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine halfway up. Exhale, step or float back, finding chaturanga, hug elbows in, bellies lifted. Inhale, upward dog or cobra, it's always your choice. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift up and back, downward dog. Even out the breath, so inhales and exhales are equal. Turning outer upper arms back, inner upper arms forward as you press into the thumb first finger side of your hands and stretch back. Feel free to bend both knees and stretch way back. So you're really long. From here, we're going to come into Malasana. So take your feet about as wide as the mat. Walk your hands back toward the feet. Turn the toes out as much as you need so that knees and toes line up as you come into your squat. Fingertips can stay down for support or hands up by heart. If you have knee issues, please don't go down so low. You could also sit up on a block or two blocks. Breathing here. I love this one for stretching out the low back. So if you can manage it, it's so good. Now we'll take the right hand down and lift the left arm up and turn to the left so you can get a little twist here, but allow your shoulder blades to release away from the ears. And then to center. And now the other hand down, twisting to the other side. Turning so the hips will stay neutral and will turn from above the waist. It's just a gentle twist. Come back through center and then take your hands to the mat. Walk yourself back into downward facing dog. Stretching here again, lengthening the spine. Always finding length. So if your hamstrings are tight, then bend your knees. You can stick your buns way up into the air, keep that length, and then straighten them as much as they will. Another breath. And then exhaling everything out. Bend the knees, hips high, lightly step or hop your feet up. Inhale to halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Press down through the feet. Come up with a nice long spine. Sweep the arms up. Keep the ribs and belly in. Exhale, hands to heart. And then turn to the long side of your mat. We'll do some standing poses. Step the feet out nice and wide. And turn your right leg all the way out. And bring your back toes in slightly, lining up heel to arch. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, bend the right knee over your ankle. Make sure the knee is lined up with the ankle and move it toward the little toe side of the foot so it's pointed straight ahead. Lift the chest, allow shoulder blades to relax away from ears. Firmly press to the outer edge of the back foot. Press the back thigh back. Inner thigh lifts up. And then dropping your back arm to reverse. Exhale, bend into that right knee a little more if you can, but relax shoulders. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, take right forearm to right thigh. Reach your left arm up and over and spin your tricep down. As you are in side angle here, lengthen from your right hip crease through your right armpit, and then try to turn your belly button up toward the ceiling. Being the breath nice and steady. Make sure that knee's still over the ankle. Come back up to warrior two as you inhale and then straighten the leg. Bring your feet to parallel and we'll do the other leg. Left leg all the way out, back toes in, lining heel to arch. 
Inhale the arms up, bend the knee, exhale, warrior two. Double check again your knee, make sure it's over your ankle, moving toward the little toe sides of the feet. Lifting the chest, shoulder blades release away from ears. Press with the outer edge of the back foot as you breathe here. So our student today, Matt, has been practicing with me for five years. Can you believe it? I know I mentioned it already, but it just, it's crazy. <laughs> Bend into the left knee in reverse. Inhale back up, leaning forward, left forearm to left thigh. Reach the right arm up and over, spin the tricep forward. Relax shoulders from ears. And by the way, his alignment is really, really good. It made me proud. <laughs> Take another breath here in side angle. Lengthen from your hip crease through the armpit. And inhale to warrior two. Straighten the leg, feet to parallel, toes in just a little toward each other. Hands on hips. Firming the legs. Roll the shoulders back, look up and lengthen on your inhale, hinge from your hips, exhale, walking your fingertips down or use a block here if it's hard to reach. Keep the long spine on your inhale. As you exhale, reach your right arm up and twist. As you inhale, the left hand is below the middle, right underneath where your thumb would be. If you want deeper, you can move it over toward your right foot a little, but keep the hips level and shift the weight toward the balls of the feet if it's all in the heels. Back to center, inhale, lengthen, exhale, left arm coming up. I suppose that could be your right arm. You know me with right and left, do the other arm. <laughs> lengthen as you inhale, maybe take it deeper as you exhale. Keep the hips level though, remember, twisting from above the waist, important. Come back through center, Come halfway up, inhale, bring hands to hips, exhale. Come up with your nice long spine, inhale, and then we'll make our way with the feet back together and to the front of the mat. Back to Samastitihi, nice Tadasana pose, standing tall. Inhale, reach the arms up, exhale and fold over the legs. As you inhale, come halfway up and lengthen. As you exhale, step or float back, finding chaturanga. Chest forward, belly in. Then inhale, press back up to plank if you can, or just come into up dog. Otherwise, again, chaturanga into up dog, just a little extra strengthening work. And then shoulders above wrists in your up dog. I'm having him scoot his feet back a little so his shoulders are above the wrists and then back to down dog. So if you find your shoulders are always in front of your wrists, you can always scoot your feet back a little or press straight up so they align. Coming forward, we'll make our, our way to seated for bridge pose. So lying down, make sure that your heels are underneath your knees and that the outer edges of your feet are parallel. Arms alongside your body, press into the heels, keep the belly lifted as you come to bridge lengthening sitting bones toward backs of heels, firmly pressing into the heels to engage the hamstrings and then spin your inner thighs down toward the mat. Keep the back of the neck long and collarbones nice and wide. Take another breath here. And then come on down and then Let's just take the knees in toward each other. Put a hand on your heart center, hand on your belly. What are you grateful for today? Think of something. I'm super grateful that I got to meet Matt West after commenting back and forth for five years. It was super awesome. So let's come into bridge again one more time. Press into the heels, come on up, roll shoulders under if you can, interlacing fingers. If you have a block handy, you can always take supported bridge instead, or if you love Urdhva Dhanurasana and you want to take that instead, that's totally okay too. Spin inner thighs down, lengthen sitting bones, and then this time we're adding extend the right leg forward with knees in line. This will strengthen the hamstrings in the back a little bit more, and the glutes. Slowly release it down 
and then pressing into the heel that's on the floor, extend the left leg forward. Knees are in line, inner thigh still spinning down, squeeze outer hips gently, and then release it and come on down, slowly rolling down. And then this time we'll hug the knees into the chest, gently rock a little side to side, give your low back a nice little massage. And then next, we'll come into Supta Padangustasana. So if you have a strap, you can use your strap for this one. We'll start with the knees, bent, feet on the floor, and then extending your right leg up toward the ceiling. Flex the ankle. You can hold onto your right leg anywhere along the leg, or use a strap, or Matt is pretty flexible, so he's grabbing the toe and then extending left leg forward, keeping that ankle flexed. If it's too much to extend the leg, then don't keep it bent. But with the right leg lifted, make sure to draw your right hip forward toward your left foot. We want nice level hips here. Stretching out the hamstrings. This is another one that's really good if you have low back issues just to keep your hamstrings flexible is important. As you exhale, start to open to the right little by little, but keep the left hip grounded down onto the floor. You can even place your hand on the left hip if you like, just to remind it to stay down. Look over the left shoulder if that's okay with your neck. Inhale, bring it back to center. As you exhale, you'll switch hands either with the strap or hold the leg with the other hand, with the left hand as you bring it across for your twist. Look over the right shoulder. <laughs> we were on a hill, so it was hard for <laughs> to stay from, from rolling over during this twist. Bring it back to center. And then we'll release. And keep the right knee bent as you take that foot onto the floor and extend the left leg up. Again, you can hold on to the left leg anywhere. You can use a strap around the ball of the left foot. He's very flexible in those hamstrings. He's grabbing the toe. But if you're not as flexible, you don't have to grab the toe, of course, but draw that left hip forward so that the hips remain level. Make sure the right toes stay pointed up toward the ceiling. And then I'm helping on the other side as we take the leg out to the left. So bring the leg out to the left, keeping that right hip down. I'm kind of holding on so that Matt doesn't roll down the hill. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Bring the leg back to center and then switch hands. So you hold the leg with your right hand, taking it across for your twist. As you're twisting, turn your belly up toward the ceiling. Look over the left shoulder if that's fine with your neck. Inhale, bring it back through center. And slowly release it as you exhale. Hug both knees into the chest. And in this one, just make sure to lengthen your sitting bones toward the floor. So we're going to come into... Our final resting pose, Shavasana. I wanted to make sure that was true. <laughs> Extending the legs. Lengthen sitting bones toward heels. Just let your feet flop open. Bring your arms by your sides, palms up. Release your shoulders away from your ears. Close your eyes and rest as you're settling in. Our quote today comes from Thich Nhat Han. We have to walk in a way that we only print peace and serenity on the earth. Walk as if you are kissing the earth with your feet.
and making movements to reawaken your body. Take a nice long breath as you reach out through your arms and your legs. And now bend your knees, roll yourself off to your right side. Thank yourself for taking your practice. Good work today. Let's come up to seated with the shins crossed. And we'll bring our hands together in front of the heart. It's bringing hands to forehead, reminding us to have clear and loving thoughts. Hands to the heart center, reminding us to have clear and loving intentions. And hands to the mouth to remind us to have clear and loving communication, sending positive energy out to all beings everywhere. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you to Matt West for visiting and contacting me. It was so awesome to, to meet him. And it's so awesome to meet all of the Fight Master Yogi community. Everyone I've met has been amazing. I would love to meet you, as a matter of fact, and I have some retreats coming up. Sedona, Arizona, April 5th through the 8th. Also in Amsterdam, a master class, June 23rd and 24th. A retreat in Greece, the Kofonisi Island, June 30th through July 6th. And Morocco, July 8th through the 14th. Go to fightmasteryoga.com for more information. I want to meet you too. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.